is finally Hero February, which means the start of a bunch of Hero Factory themed Bionicle Inspiration series episodes. Oh yeah. So let's give you some inspiration so you can start building some heroes or start building some villains in the month of February. So let's start off strong with a mock called Yellow Jacket built by Todrick. So this is an insanely cool idea for a villain. And I love the fact that the yellow headpiece that they're using here is actually a piece from this specific Lightyear set. So there was a time where I was seeing this on clearance for like months and months, and it was actually getting very, very cheap at some point. So it's nice to see parts from a set like that getting a little bit of love on a mock. Because hey, if there's one thing better than heavily discounted Lego, it's using those pieces in your own creations and getting use out of that discounted set. So the way that Todd combined the printed headpiece with some striped stickers, uh, as well as adding some other elements around that piece too, much like this faceplate, which is the front part of one of the classic Tiny Turbo sets, much like this little racers set here. Uh, all of that's awesome, isn't it? It makes for a very sinister looking villain. Also, the whole leg design is just great. I love the fact that they're using this Alpha Team piece here that appeared in this set. So this unique piece is such a fun little mech thing. You, you put the minifigure in it and then they had those big robot arms. They could swim around in the ocean with it. It was a really fun idea and I remember playing with that and really enjoying it as a kid. But, you know, given that this is a larger element, it's fair to say that it can be a little bit more like challenging to build with. I often find that, and I don't know if you guys agree, but, you know, sometimes when you have those massive elements or even just sort of slightly bigger elements with very specific uses, sometimes you're like, I don't know how to use this. But given that Todd has taken this piece and really heavily integrated it into this leg design, well, yeah, I mean, it makes for a fantastic foot. And you know, given how far up that piece goes, it's also probably helped shape the rest of that lower leg as well. So yeah, he's integrated it perfectly and made great use of the fact that, you know, this piece has some printed areas on the side. So, you know, that's now on the mock and yeah, you just get a really distinct shape with it. So he did a great job using that here. Also, this big barrel on the back that links up with the flamethrower, that's awesome. This is just a great villain and the perfect way to kick off HF Feb. All right, starting off strong with a villain, let's move to a hero now. This is Thresher 1.0 and it's built by Jega01. So if you're not familiar with him, uh, Thresher is a character that was never actually made as a set, but they were you know, decently big in the story for Hero Factory. He's appeared in various forms of media and he does look really cool, even if he is just a green variant of bulk, but hey. It's a cool character, and it's really, really fun to see someone actually just physically building it. Even though this is digital, I guess it's not physical, but still, seeing a mock of it, very fun. So I mentioned that it was digital. You can also see a few custom pieces thrown in here as well. But, you know, there's still plenty we can learn about this that could easily be built with real bricks in the real world. So, you know, for example, like this utility belt. It looks like it's made by just wrapping some flex tube around the waist and then finding some ways to link it in on the front and the back. It looks really good, doesn't it? You know, all these cool little accessories and stuff. It's the perfect addition to actually add a little bit more to that very stereotypical Hero Factory hero chest design, which is a little bit difficult to customize because you basically can only really use two pieces on it and it's a little hard to add stuff on the front. But doing something like that, now you can personalize it a little bit more. And this color is also very, very lovely. It's this interesting, I guess, metallic dark green. I wish colors like this actually existed. I, we have a close enough color. There's this uh, metallic green that came on this specific Technic set, and I believe nothing else. It was one of those weird early 2000s decisions where they're like, screw it, let's make a new color and then never use it again, which must have been a very expensive thing to do. But those pieces still exist. You can build with them, but there's a limited amount of those pieces, so it's not as easy to build something with them. Not impossible, but not as easy. So yeah, hopefully one day we'll see a return of like a metallic green, and then something like this might be a little bit easier to build. But yeah, the mark's great. I love this blaster weapon using some dishes and some studs. It's awesome. Bit of a different one now. This is built by Misep and it's called Buzzsaw Slicer. Slicers in the month of Hero Factory? Well, I'm gonna quickly read the story for this guy because then things will make sense and it's a good story. Zapped from planet Slicer into another world through mysterious circumstances, the buzzsaw Slicer has found itself surrounded by beings of an alien compound known as CCBS. With its two massive saws and recent electropulse coil upgrades from the evil Von Nebula, the buzzsaw Slicer wrecks havoc in Makahiro City, returning the world to an older, more classic form of construction. So it's a cool idea, and uh, I do like the more like kind of meta elements of that story as well. It's very good fun. But you know, in the wonderful world of Hero Factory, you really could get away with stuff like that, right? 
I mean, heck, we're seeing crossovers with other original LEGO IPs like Ninjago and Dreams and even Chima are overlapping. So, yeah, it's awesome. Why not have Hero Factory exist in the same world as other construction themes? Or, you know, like this, it's alternate dimension stuff. But, hey, there's no reason they couldn't travel to a planet where Slizers live, right? It, it works. So maybe you could explore stuff like that next time you build a Hero Factory mock. Can you have it intersect with other LEGO themes in a fun or exciting way? It's a cool idea. Now, I do love these buzzsaw weapons. They blend very well with the silver tubing that's used on the different limbs of this mock, and I think it just makes for a really cool weapon. Now, of course, this mock also has a slicer head, but it makes sense. It is a slicer, of course it would do that. And here's the specific head on the original set that it came from. If you're not too familiar with slicers or you weren't sure what set it came in, all that sort of stuff, here it is here. But, you know, to be fair, the idea of using a slicer head on just any regular mock, that's a good idea. You don't really see many people using slicer heads on any old random mock, but like we can see here, it looks really cool, so why not? If you're not a fan of a custom-built head design, or you just don't want to use any typical bionicle mask, look to slicers. They could work for a cool head design. Another great detail are these electro-pulse coil upgrades that they mentioned in the story. These big beam things coming out of the back. They use a lot of, you know, system dish pieces, and, uh... I think they look pretty nice and you know, obviously it implies that electric power set like they mentioned but even still it's just an interesting thing to put on the back that looks pretty cool i like details like that up next is data wave 2088 by bhl studios now i was asked to read this exact text in the email so here we go last year for hf feb i submitted akara senshi hero of the rising sun when you were discussing how i applied an aesthetic to a character you mentioned cyberpunk as a potential aesthetic for this year, I decided to take on that challenge and create a cyberpunk hero, and what you see before you is the result. So yeah, I'm glad that I was able to inspire that mock for you, and hey, that's great. The idea of a very like tech-heavy hero, one that's using tech from the future, or super advanced technology, or they are actually just straight up a hero from the future in the year 2088, all of that's a cool idea. And plus, coming in with that idea, I think, also opens you up to a lot more, like, cool creative possibilities, right? You know, even just the choice to include that stickered data pad on the back and this weapon which uses some lightsaber bars on it. It all feels very cyberpunky and perfectly fitting for this type of character. I feel like it's less likely for you to see that sort of stuff on just, like, your regular everyday hero. But as soon as you come in with the idea that this is going to be a cyberpunk character, suddenly that opens up your mind to a lot more creative ideas, doesn't it? So, yeah, I like that. Very unique and very different idea for a hero this year. This is cool. Vurox is the next mock we'll be talking about, and this is built by Pollux Mock Building. So big, strong, powerhouse heroes like this, I think they're some of the best. I mean, this mock totally has vibes of Rocker XL, right? And, you know, the idea of XL characters I think was really cool. I love that Hero Factory sets played with the concept of what if we took the hero you love but made them big, cool, and awesome? So it's great to see mocks playing with essentially the same idea of big, bulky, strong heroes. Sure, this doesn't have that XL title in it, so it's probably not the exact same thing. But still, it's a good mock nonetheless. I actually really enjoy this dark green and red colour scheme. Sure, those are the colours of Christmas, but I think the choice to throw in some gunmetal and also to include some translucent elements, as well as make the dark green a very minor inclusion. I mean, I can see like six dark green parts on the front of the mock, and I guess also those dark green fingers as well. Still, very minimal dark green. All of these different choices here, it makes this feel less like a Christmas creation and more like a mock that is just dark green and red. I think playing with the amount of a specific colour that you put in, it's a great way to remove a like deeper symbolic meaning behind a specific colour scheme. Now sure, it's not going to totally remove it, you can still see elements of Christmas in this, but it makes it a little bit less like obvious and makes it easier to ignore those Christmas vibes. Anyway, I love seeing all this gorgeous CCBS armour layering on the torso. That's the beauty of CCBS, isn't it? It's so easy to pull off incredible shaping like this. It's so easy to craft well-armoured, bulky, compact designs. And it makes for some of the most stunning armour you've ever seen. And this mock does it very, very well. Plus two blasters on both arms. That's the kind of thing you can get away with on a big bulky boy like this. So cool. Alright, and now it's time for Voltix, and this is built by Sujigeti Mate. Let's take a glance back at the original version of Voltex. I think it was a great set, with a good array of really nice pieces. But I remember when this came out, people were complaining about it being a little too messy. You know, you've got electric pieces all over the head, you've got wires in blue and red, and then you've also got this big yellow tentacle piece thing, and that almost kind of looks like a third wire in a third colour. Then you got purple, gunmetal, and red for the colour scheme. 
there's so much going on, it feels a little all over the place. Now, personally, I don't mind this set. He's a bit wacky and fun, and I think that's good, and he's a brilliant parts pack. So, to me, I, I like this set, but I understand some of that criticism. So, it's great to see a revamp like this that tidies things up a little bit. And all in all, it makes this look a lot more, like, refined and certainly a lot more clean. It's also good to see some tubing that's still on this mock, and that big blaster gun, that's a good inclusion. Sure, it's similar to the original uh, Zamosphere launcher that was on the set, but this is a neat little upgrade, making it, uh, you know, no longer have any uh, projectiles that it can fire, but it's still a really cool design. So yeah, it's great to see Voltex getting a bit of love, this is a cool revamp. And finally, we finish this episode off with a revamp of Dragon Bolt by EMS Mocks. So, this here was the original toy for Dragon Bolt, but yeah. EMS made a much bigger version. And look, maybe it's just because I love the Cardus Dragon, which is a huge, big Lego Dragon set. But isn't it super satisfying to see a huge, imposing Lego Dragon? If you're going to revamp Dragon Bolt, you may as well make them massive. I mean, you know, they were the big, expensive, main, bad guy Titan set of the Brain Attack wave of Hero Factory sets. So, you know, a bigger, scaled up version, it does feel very appropriate for the character. Now, as for the mock itself, I love this claw design. I think it's quite clever. It's using some of the original Mutter arm pieces in black, and these specifically came on the Nui Rama set here. But, you know, yeah, in this context, using a few of them to shape these claws, it's great, isn't it? And you could probably only get away with this design on a big, massive boy like this mock here. So the mock keeps the same blue headpiece that we saw on the original set, but the jaw is a little bit different this time. It's using the jaw piece that we see on some of the classic Ninjago Dragon sets. Those two pieces, it's nice to see how well they pair with each other. And the size of both parts also fits this new scale of this build. So yeah, it's lovely. Now, I believe these translucent wing elements, these are custom pieces. Although if these were official LEGO parts, I would buy them instantly. I am so hungry for LEGO to make some sort of big, huge translucent part like this, because it would be perfect for some sort of water design on a system mock, or windows on a massive space base, or dragon wings, much like we see on this mock here. So look, you know, going down uh, the custom approach for these wings here. I think that's the right thing to do. This mock is a huge, massive build in a very large scale. You'd probably struggle to cover up those wings with official pieces. You, you probably could do it, but it might be a bit more expensive, or you might need heaps of pieces to be able to do it. So, you know, cutting up something random using whatever material this is to do that, it was probably the right approach. So yeah, a big grand version of Dragon Bolt. What's not to love? So that's it for the first episode of HF Feb. Stay tuned for more episodes of the Barnacle Inspiration series, all dedicated to Hero Factory. I'll also be posting all sorts of other Hero Factory related videos throughout the week and throughout this whole month of February, so stay tuned for that too. Now, of course, in the month of February, we build heroes or we build villains. It's totally up to you, but whichever one you want. So hopefully this inspires you to do exactly that. And once you have built your hero or your villain, feel free to submit them to the submission email and I'll do my best to feature them in an episode of the Barnacle Inspiration series. So stay tuned for more. Who knows, your mock might be featured in the next episode. Otherwise, be sure to check the links in the description below so you can see some of the other builds that these wonderful builders that I featured today have built. Definitely worth giving them a follow, leaving a like, and checking out what they do. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Happy building and bye for now.